Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Compass Point. This coming Sunday, I'm going to record a message that has an interesting title, The Me God Sees. I might spend actually more than a week reflecting on what it means to say that, The Me God Sees. It's going to be an introduction to a reflection on how we are never really alone in this world. God sees us. And God not only sees us in our current situations, God sees the people we are in the process of becoming, the people that he is in the process of recreating so that we become more and more like Jesus. The me God sees. To introduce that this morning, I'd like us to just reflect on an Old Testament individual named Hagar. We don't read a lot about Hagar, but we do read important things about her in Genesis chapter 16. Hagar is an Egyptian young woman. She is a uh, maidservant to Sarah, the wife of Abraham. And as you know that story, Abraham and Sarah are well advanced in years. Sarah has never been able to bear a child for Abraham, which would be a very difficult uh, situation for, for any family, for any man as prominent, as wealthy as Abraham was, to not have an heir, a descendant, would be, you know, catastrophic to him. And so Sarah comes up with this plan to have Abraham have a child with Hagar, her maidservant. And Hagar becomes pregnant by Abraham. And that is something that proves to be very damaging to the relationship between Sarah and Hagar. Hagar begins to gloat. Sarah feels humiliated, so much so that she begins to mistreat and abuse Hagar, her maidservant. And so it gets to the point that Hagar feels so hurt, so frightened, so abused, that she has to run. We hear about this, unfortunately, many times. People who are mistreated and abused, most often women, who have no place to go, but they can't stay where they are, and so they just run. They flee somewhere. That's what Hagar did. Where is she to go? She has no home. She's a slave. She's pregnant. In desperation, she just runs into the wilderness. And it's there that she has an incredible encounter with God. She meets an angel who asks her, Hagar, where have you come from? And where are you going? The angel begins to say a little bit more about the child that she will give birth to, how he will be an incredible, powerful man and the father of a countless uh, generations, multitude of descendants. And so Hagar returns to Sarah as the angel instructs her to do. The child that she is bearing would soon be born. He's given the name Ishmael. But there in the desert, Hagar, because of that incredible encounter with an angel of the Lord, gives God a name. El, which is the Hebrew word for God, and Roy, which is based on the Hebrew verb to see. As Hagar puts it, you are the God who sees me, El Roy. It's the only time in the Bible that we see God referred to this way. Never again is he called El Roy. But in our prayers, in our acclamations of God, we can refer to God this way countless times. You are the God who sees me. Because it's true. Over and over again in Scripture, we, we read beautiful verses that tell us how much God knows us. He created us. He loves us. He cares for us. He sees us in every situation. I think of these verses, for instance, in Isaiah 43, verse 1, I have called you by name, you are mine. In Isaiah 49, verse 16, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. That's what God says in words that lovingly express his care for us. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. That means we are never apart from God. That must have meant so much to Hagar in the situation that she was in. Perhaps she felt that she was going to die there in the desert, she and her unborn child. But God met her there, so much so that she could say, you are the God who sees me. I want you to know that God is the God who sees you. When I think of that verse in Isaiah about having us engraved on the palms of God's hands. It's a very graphic image. It literally means that I have carved you into the palms of my hands. That speaks of hands that have been wounded, cut open, 
And who else but can, can we think of but our Lord Jesus, whose hands were pierced and cut and nailed to the cross. Because of that, we can have all assurance that God knows us, that God meets us everywhere, that Jesus is present and sees us in every situation. I'll have more to say about that on Sunday morning and in future weeks, but I hope you are encouraged this morning or today, whenever you are watching this Compass Point, by knowing that God sees you. What an incredible comfort that is. We'll explore that more further, uh, further this Sunday and in future weeks. In the meantime, be well and be blessed.